This is the all new Transition Sentinel V3. I've ridden every generation of the Sentinel and owned the second gen for quite a while. If you've been watching the channel, you maybe already even checked that video out. But that reminds me, over 50% of viewers are not subscribers. So if you're not subscribed or you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It goes a long way to get more bikes to review. Today we're covering what's new, builds, some initial ride impressions, and give the Sentinel V3 a loam score. So what's new? Well, a lot. From a distance, it looks similar. You get a 150 frame and a 160 fork, as well as the 29 inch wheels, but that's about it. First off, the new Sentinel is mixed wheel compatible with the flip chip right here. It can also be adjusted to 160 mils of travel in the back by increasing the stroke of the shock. The old bike was adjustable down to 140, but now that the Smuggler is adjustable up to 140, it makes sense that this bike is now adjustable up to 160. The suspension itself also receives some work. It now has more support higher in the travel, making for a livelier feel that should leave room for bigger hits. I felt the V2 to be lively enough, but was surprised how fast I could overwhelm the 150 millimeters of travel. I almost felt the first gen offered better performance when things got rough, so I was excited to see how the new version compares. Transition also updated the rocker link to be one piece, which should stiffen things up and help with composure on those big hits. Again, I can't wait to really test it out. Looking at the Geo, I see a few interesting things. First, the head tube angle is actually actually steeper at 64 degrees, so it's not steep. I mentioned in other videos, but I think we're reaching some sort of equilibrium when it comes to geo. And for a trail bike, 64 or 64 and a half degrees makes a lot of sense. Next, the seat tube got even steeper. That was not something I really considered the old bike needing, but when you realize this bike can be run as a mullet, then it probably does. Last on the Geo, the bike gets longer, mostly due to the introduction of size specific chain stays, but also the reach increased to 480 for the size large. This one definitely wasn't a surprise, but I'm happy to see it. So the Geo was largely to be expected. Transition was ahead of its time when it introduced the Sentinel, so there was just some refinement to do. The other big news is that the bike is mixed wheel compatible. It seems when a lot of brands do this, they sacrifice a bit on the mullet side. I'm happy I have a bit more time with this bike and can check that out for myself. Transition did raise the BB ever so slightly, which is a good sign. And with the flip chip, the BB should sit right around 344, which is right in line with my Nomad. Looking more closely at the frame, you get that one piece rocker link I already mentioned. It's now UDH compatible and it has in-frame storage. Transition put what they're calling the boom box low in the frame, which should make things easier to get out and without mounting a bottle on the door should stay in place better without noise. They did redesign the cable routing, which I know is going to be a point of contention. But the large ports still look to keep the bike easy to work on, and the new routing through the BB area with the integrated mud flap should keep things quiet, tidy, and water from the main pivot bearings. You still have mounts for tools, and the Sentinel will come equipped with the Fidlock base, so you can run some pretty massive water bottles if you want. On the size large, I have room to run a standard bottle, so I'll keep doing that, but for the smaller frames, it's nice. They also mentioned the water will run out of the frame better. I know my old Sentinel and Spire often had little puddles underneath the shock. It didn't bother me, but it's nice to see that they're working on it. I think that just about covers what's new, so let's get it out on the trail. Welcome back to the channel, folks. We have the all new Transition Sentinel. I rode the last V2 for quite a while and I got to ride the V1 a fair bit too. So I'm excited to see how things have changed and what that means for the ride. We're out here in Bellingham today and we are going to see how it handles their home trails. Unfortunately, we do have to climb to the top first. When it comes to climbing, the Sentinel is impressive. I reviewed the second generation of the Sentinel in 2020, so a lot has changed in the market. I felt the V2 climbed very well, but at the time was comparing it more to full enduro bikes. When compared to other trail bikes of the time, body position was good and traction was great for technical climbing, but efficiency and switchback suffered a bit. The third generation Sentinel is certainly more efficient. The body position is even more upright and feels a bit goofy, but it's better weighted for switchbacks. Overall, compared to other current bikes with 140 to 150 mils of travel, it's an exceptional climber. First up, we have my infamous switchbacks. This is the kind of easy one, but it's still no joke. Uh. Yep. See how Nate does the, the bad, the big boy. <laughs> All right, first attempt. This new body position is very upright, so feeling really centered. But let's see if it cuts as well as it needs to. Wow, that wasn't too bad at all. 
<laughs> relatively long bike, but there we go, not bad. I think I was just... It's a very moody Pacific Northwest day out here, which is always appropriate for a new bike ride. Oh, that's not how you do it. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of a somewhat hairy cliff edge. Oh, that was so bad. Just got a blackberry bush in between my fingers. Oh, that hurt. Man, I need to put the gloves on. Oh, lots more switchbacks, but not a problem. Let's get into the fun stuff. First downhill on the new Sentinel. Oh, got this slimy little guy. Oh, not quite. The new Sentinel rallies trails and steeps with the best of them. It's noticeably more rigid on G-outs and when you huck to flat. At speed, it's composed, and the steeper head angle make for a lively bike at slow speeds without sacrificing, especially when things got chunky. Settling into the Sentinel, I think Transition has a winner. I'm excited that I get to keep the Sentinel for a bit, and we'll mess with the flip chip, as well as running at mixed wheels. Whew. It is wet. At least these branches are wet. Oh. And we're here. That is wet today. Woo! All right, let's see how the new Sentinel handles some speed. It is pretty lively. Not bummed about that at all. All right, and. Here's the big huck to flat. See how things work. And the Lone score is 44, putting it here with other all-mountain trail bikes. As far as climbing, while I didn't love the body position, it helped on switchbacks. So it's up there with the best, and efficiency is on the level with bikes a step down in travel. On the descents, it's tied with my favorite bikes, excelling on the steeps and handling the rest without issue. Finally, I've got to give it to Transition for value. Up to the XT Carbon bike, the build kits are excellent. Who's this bike for? Transition said they're looking to hit the sweet spot, and I think they're onto something. Oh, we got big all tree down. bikes should be equally capable on the climbing, and on the descents. If you want a trail bike that can handle every descent, depending on the pilot, and climbs without the weight and sluggishness of an enduro bike, the new Transition Sentinel delivers. Final thoughts. I expected the V2 to be an all out enduro bike and was a bit disappointed. Now that Transition has the Spire, the Sentinel has found a sweet spot as the all-mountain trail bike it was supposed to be. This is a bike that can ride every trail you can. It's somehow more capable on the descents than the V2, but also a better climber. Bikes no longer need to sacrifice climbing for descending. They can have both. I'm also excited to see the return of proper builds. This XT option with RockShox's ultimate suspension is exactly as I'd build it. For a price that doesn't break the bank and is reflective of pre-pandemic prices. The Carbon GX bike back then was $6,500. This bike's only $6,200. See how 
the new Sentinel does on some steep loam. The Alloy XT bike is also a great way to save more than a grand without sacrificing anything on the trail. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe so you don't miss an upload. Transition already has carbon bikes in stock with Alloy coming shortly. The long term review is still about a month out, but new videos drop every Friday with bonus videos most Tuesdays. Shopping using the links on my channel's page helps support the channel at no cost to you. Let me know what you think about the new Sentinel. Now get out there, go fast, and take chances. See you next week. Yeah. Bit of a rut to ride. Whew. Oh, yeah. Whew. Cannot see what's underneath there. It's a little scary. Attempt two. First one went pretty well. Let's see. Oh no.